Great. So uh, I'm Eric Johnson. I'm the VP of Engineering here at GitLab, and I'm with uh, Dahlia Havens, one of my directors of engineering on the development side of the house, as well as uh, my quality leader, uh, Mech, uh, who's uh, engineering manager for quality. And they're about to take me through uh, some new metrics, a uh, system we call throughput. So this is a way for us to become more serious about using metrics uh, to measure our productivity. And one of the key things about GitLab is that we want to keep things light and fast. And so we try to focus on passive measures of productivity. Uh, the, um, that's in opposed to you know, heavyweight planning and estimation meetings. Uh, so this is our first iteration. They're going to walk us through um, what this looks like. And then we'll talk about what future iterations might look like. Uh, so take it away, Dahlia. All right. Thanks, Eric. So um, this is kind of a, a pretty informal walkthrough, but uh, just a brief description on throughput because it is a distinction between a lot of the velocity and estimation that a lot of teams are used to. Uh, this metric captures work that's been done. And the idea of throughput is that you're measuring units of work within a certain timeline. Uh, what we decided to go with for GitLab is that we're, we want to measure number of MRs per week. Uh, we're not so much interested in the raw number, but we're trying to build a trend that we can look at and identify the ups and downs and what bottlenecks we may see from the chart. So that's kind of the focus of our first iteration. The next thing that we also were able to add, uh, which was a really nice plus from the first iteration was categorization. So we wanted to see what level of investment we're doing uh, by team in each of these categories. And the big categories for us, I'll take you through them as we look at the charts, uh, but a big heavy on, you know, we have community need contributions, we have um, security, we have bugs, uh, we have feature work and so on. Um, so it, we didn't want to clutter the graph with like every single label that we have. Uh, so we really were methodical to identify those five categories. We're also tracking undefined just because we want to capture all the work done, even if it's not labeled properly. Uh, and that's actually a really good way to kind of go back as an engineering manager looking at your team uh, and seeing, hey, this work was not labeled and therefore I have little data to go on um, you know, making certain uh, educated guesses on our investment. So those are the two aspects of the graph that we'll go through. Um, so what are some of your questions? How do you want to start? Do you want to look at a kind of a graph from a team and we can pick at random or what's a good way to walk through this? Yeah, I think uh, making it situational if possible is good. I mean, we don't have a lot of data yet, um, but something that's more example driven would be, would be great at this point. Um, okay, let me... Um, Go ahead and share my screen here. I have too many windows. <laughs> All right, so this is uh, the quality dashboard and a big big thanks and kind of the ownership of this comes from the inside team. So Max team drives a lot of, like pretty much the implementation of this with it's been really great to see this put together. Um, so just want to make a shout out to them. Um, so let's see. I'll pick a team. I'll pick on Configure. <laughs> I really didn't um, like. I'm not so much, um, you know, trying to to put them on the spot. But if you look at the Configure graph, this is what throughput looks like week to week. And one of the things that we're doing for first iteration is we're capping it to 12 weeks. So it's long enough to give us, you know, 12 weeks of data. Um, it's not so long that the graph is cluttered and you can't really uh, nail, like get down to uh, what each week looks like. If you hover over the graph, you start to see the breakdown. So we have these labels that tell you uh, our feature investment, how many bugs and so on. And again, remember these are number of MRs, not number of issues that we're tracking here. Um, the other thing to remember and it was really, really awesome to see um, on the pages that we're, we're displaying the associated uh, projects that we're tracking. So one of the things that some teams are impacted by, um, for instance, Secure, uh, contributes to projects that are not yet um, indexed here. So their throughput would not be reflective of their full capacity. So this is a really good way to kind of gauge how, how we're tracking throughput based on what projects and so on. And we're looking to add these projects as like additional projects. So Hope the data should encompass all work. We're just not quite there yet. Um, so, you know, it's it's somewhat typical of our of what we would expect. You see the the November fifth being one of our tall bars here. It is close to feature free, so it is expected that a lot of MRs would go uh, during that time. But it's really nice to see that we don't lose momentum on the other weeks either. Um, so we're able to see 
you know, merge requests going in week after week. Um, and that's what I want to see. I want to start to see a bit of a closer consistency in delivery week to week, as opposed to just spikes every four weeks or so on. Um, so I'll pause thing, here. Um, yeah, so yeah, well, uh, good time for questions. I was going to say, what was the thinking about using uh, merge requests versus issues as the unit of work to track? Yeah, the, the, we, we had a bit of a conversation, like we had a good discussion and I can point you to the issue, but the big driver here is that MRs are kind of the lowest unit that, that you can measure, which means that we have more flexibility. Um, if we start to try to drive the smallest change and make that an issue, you'll start to define issues that don't really focus on value. Like it's not implementing the full thing, whereas an MR could be a building block toward building this you know, bigger vision. So the issue is an easier way from a tracking perspective um, to make it the full use case. And then the MRs can start, can be broken down to what is the smallest deliverable. Ideally, I do want developers to get to a place where they're delivering on a daily basis. And sometimes that's not going to be implementing the full thing that the, you know, either PM or, or the bug addresses, but it's a really good, you know, definition of done small piece that we can add on day to day. And um, is, I just want to HMR uh, positively mapped to an issue. In other words, so if, if there's one issue that's strategic from product management's perspective and it's uh, put in the code base over the course of five MRs, is each one of those MRs traceable to its issue or is that something we're going to have to um, track and see what the compliance is and if we have that traceability? The, the well, MRs do tie into issue. Okay, I'll pause and let Meg go. Um, so Sorry, this is one of the challenges I want to help chime in is that some of our senior and staff engineers sometimes just work directly in MRs and they don't necessarily have an issue associated with it, which is why we can't use issues as a, as a unit. Okay. And also one issue can also spin off into two to three MRs. So ideally MRs is the, the, the lowest unit that we can measure here. Yeah. Right. So what, I, what I'm getting at is that we have this sort of separate discussion about what we're prioritizing, which is uh, loosely coupled to what we're actually executing, right? Um, and it, it, if it's okay that they're different, in fact, it's, it's ideal that they're different because I like what you said, Dahlia, about the smallest unit of work and tracking that, um, but it would be nice, uh, or it's a, I guess it's a question, uh, we should be iterative and say, uh, it would be nice if um, uh, we have line of sight to being able to do that because at the end of the day, if we feel we're not doing enough tech debt or if we're not doing enough security issues or recently we had a discussion, we were doing too many security issues and we should change our SLAs. Uh, that might be more actionable at the issue level opposed to the MR level. So it'd be nice to be able to operate it at both. We, we still have, like, I think to Max point, we should probably try to drive more that start with an issue, get an MR. Uh, but, it, but to your point, Eric, about um, kind of the ratio of investment, I feel that MR is the right uh, the right way to go because feature development tends to be a bigger block of work. And if you only track it as one, you're going to, you're not going to be very accurate and you're not going to also be able to get to consistently smaller units of work across all of your deliverables. And that's what I'm trying to achieve. If I'm going to stack them against each other, I don't want a weight system to basically inflate the feature work uh, to try to kind of predict that that's more of, a chunk of work than a bug and so on. So getting to the MR level gives us a bit more consistency than if we were tracking at the issue level. Okay, cool. And what about, um, you mentioned the, uh, you, I think you called out November 5th because it was right before the feature freeze and therefore it was naturally higher. How does this translate into a future world where, yeah, we're still doing monthly releases in terms of, how, in terms of being user customer facing for self-managed and, and open source versions. Um, but, uh, but for dot com, especially we're doing continuous delivery and deploying, you know, 30 times a day, that sort of thing. Yeah. I mean, it, the seventh shouldn't, should start to not necessarily be a date that we care about. And that's something we have to figure out because we want to maintain the, del the milestone delivery with these consistent, you know, like we're just always shipping. We're always getting stuff out to production. Um, I don't know that we've had this conversation of how we're, how we want to package or when do we want to stop for a release or what we would consider to be this is the deadline but we're seeing a lot of like the that date has been actually driving a lot of stress and um 
you know, not necessarily the behavior that we want to see. So I, I'd like to see that that week is actually a non, a non show in our graph. It doesn't, it doesn't change our throughput because it's an activity that we're able to do in the background based on, you know, this is the time when we cut, we package, we test it and we get it out. Uh, and then the rate of delivery is consistently, you know, throughput is high. You know, we're seeing the, that trend stabilize week after week, basically. Okay, cool. Uh, and so if you mentioned this was the configured team, so if I were uh, Dylan, the manager of the configured team, and I'm looking at this 12 week moving window, what does this tell me about my, about my, uh, my people collectively? What kind of decisions would you make from looking at this? Yeah, I, I think it would be, you know, we're still seeing a lot of activity on, on the week of delivery. That might be something to talk about. Um, you see some undefined, so maybe labeling MRs could be helpful in categorization. Uh, the other thing I forgot to mention is that we're actually not able to see security uh, in any of our graphs. There is it shows up in the verify, for instance, but that's only because we've made those issues public. Uh, so security, being able to track the work that's being done on that front would be important. Um, for Dylan, what I'd like him to focus on is have, being able to look across his investment, look across the trend, see and why are we still, you know, merging heavily, you know, this is not too bad, but like, are we heavily trending toward merging the week before freeze or can we normalize this? Uh, there's not so much a huge dip. Um, so we can have conversation about, you know, what was going on on this week and why it was throughput down. Um, this is a two person team though. So I, I can predict what the answer might be if it's a week where someone took a vacation, that dip is pretty obvious. Um, one of the things I'm starting to do with my managers actually is review this chart. Uh, weekly and we're in our one-on-one -on -one, we look at this and we take notes and I've picked up this behavior from having done this before but it's really helpful because you can start to mirror the data to what is happening with the team so if you're taking notes every week on like the state of things uh, you can go back and say oh this dip was uh, you know corresponds to people taking time off or corresponds to when we were really struggling with tests or whatever it is that may be impacting the ups and downs in your graph got it cool um what else comes to mind anything jumps at you from this we can look at another team too and see the the variables here well, are these, these other charts uh, regarding misdeliverables and regressions, are those relevant to throughput or is that just elements of the team dashboard? Hey, Tommy. <laughs> welcome to Austin. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Welcome to Austin. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Cool. Um, I'm sorry, Eric. I, I think I caught some of that, but I got distracted. <laughs> That's yeah, okay. Uh, so I was saying there, there were other charts that I could see in the view and it looked like there was a, a chart for regressions oh, yeah. and deliverables. And I wasn't sure if that was strictly part of throughput or just something that's worth talking about. No, I can turn it over to Mac. That's, that's a lot of things that he's been focused on. And I know that I, I want to get into the dashboard, not throughput, but quality. How are we doing on quality? How are we doing on incidents and production and so on? We've talked a bit about like how to combine these different views. Mike, sure. do you want to speak to it? Uh, yeah, if you can, you can leave the, the, screen, the screen on, it'll be great. So uh, sure. the charts on the regressions and missed deliverables are the overall measurement that we're trying to do for our engineering productivity. So uh, we're going to marry these two graphs into one milestone where in, in one milestone, how many regressions do you have and then how many missed deliverables do you have? Then you can look at that data and compare it to the, the throughput for during that time period. We're also going to add another a zoomed out chart that's not only per week, but per, per milestone for throughput. So you can actually correlate now like what happened in this month, the next month, and the next month going forward as well. So those are the next improvements that we can add to, to the team view. In addition to that, we're also going to implement a zoomed, zoomed level view uh, at the engineering level where you, if you can scroll down, Dahlia, the, the weekly throughput um, graphs. We're going to provide this, this data at the whole engineering level as well. So it's like a uh, collate of all teams so that we can see the speed of our, of our engineering velocity overall. Nice. Okay. Uh, so what's, um, what's the current state of this? Is this in the hands of every team right now? Have people been trained on it? Sorry, I was muted. Uh, it's in the hands of every team. I, 
I'm more active with my managers. I'll touch base with Tommy and get a get an idea of um, maybe the dev team and and re- touch base with Tim as well. Um, front end and back end is interesting because this is a group level, right? It is tracking everyone whether they're contributing at a front end or back end, uh, and we've discussed like this came up before if we wanted to uh, have metrics specific to back end versus front end and we may want to do that for debugging purposes like trying to you know get a little bit down if we hit a bottleneck we can it'll help us identify which side it's on for instance and and all of that Um, that's a good that's a really good point so for people that don't understand the difference at GitLab between a group and a team a team is a collection of individual individual contributors they report to a manager. In our case, we have separate front-end and back-end teams. However, together, they would form what we call groups. In other words, we have a feature set related to one stage in the DevOps lifecycle called Monitor, and there's a front-end and a back-end team for that. So it's certainly really relevant to look at, well, what's the velocity of our Monitor feature set, uh, which is the whole group in aggregate. But obviously, managers want to, uh, separate from one another, understand the performance of their teams. So that's, a, I think, a really useful slice and the group is probably our external interface like product management and and Sid is going to want to know that internal team is going to be really really interesting so I think that would be a good a good next iteration for sure yeah the other iteration and and Mac is our Max team is already um, creating an issue for that is to also be able to click here and get the list of issues so you can start to see where is this data coming from so if something is an anomaly uh, it's a quick filter to show you um, this is the issue that doesn't have a label or this is you know where feature proposal is coming from Um, so that's going to be a really great tool uh, for debugging as well Um, the other future iteration is the trend line so we talk a lot about you know with metrics you want to be careful not to focus on the raw number and really focus on the trend so having a trend line with this graph is going to help you know drive that point across because that's what we want to you know we want managers to be having the conversation not about number of mrs but you know the trend over time yeah so that's uh nick and i have been talking about trend lines and um this became relevant because prior to this that this dashboard there was a, a spreadsheet that was mainly maintained and one of the things we looked at was like the average number of mrs per developer not individual developers but average across our developers and there's actually a difference between a trend line and what we end up using which was a rolling average the trend line is almost like sort of just a, a naive line with a single slope it's like a classifier um, the rolling average ended up being more useful, kind of like, okay. okay, well, here's 12 weeks. Let's take the rolling average of three or four weeks or something like that. You get kind of like a smooth mm-hmm. uh, smooth line. Um, and so uh, I don't know if we've been talking about that level of detail, but uh, to the extent you need a head start, I would say a rolling average is going to end up being more useful than, a, than, a, than an actual trend line, at least as Microsoft Excel defines a trend line. Okay. Um, I, I can spend some time here to, show, to share my screen as well to show you the sneak peek. Sure. Yeah. So one second here. Yeah, go ahead, Mac. Can you see my screen? Yeah. Great. So these are the the next huge items that's in an epic. Um, I grouped this under engineering productivity metrics. So the first one I was talking about is this is a zoomed out level view where we would have this a similar chart that Dali has right now, but now the time slice is on milestones instead. And that's going to be next to the, the the chart where you have your your regressions and also missed the liberal. So you see that slice in time, what's going on with that uh, release um, or milestone per team. And then you have granular day-to-day activities, the, the current one that we have at the weekly uh, schedule. Uh, we're also working on hygiene assurance. So uh, we, if, if no labels are added uh, to categorize the types of throughput, we're gonna nag people to, to uh, automatically add these labels or pick one. And then the, the, the GitLab charge is going to automatically um, add the author's team label on an, on an MR. So if someone opens an MR, they forgot to add a team level, um, every nightly run, the bot is going to go and make sure that that, that team's member team label is, add, is added to the MR, so it's correctly added. And uh, the last one, we are currently going to propose renaming feature proposal to feature, so it's concise and easy to understand. And mm-hmm. the terminology is going to be used across all MRs and also issues as well. So the, the, the terms are the same. And this is, I believe, what we were talking about. So this is the, the, the snippet from the Google uh, Sheet dashboard that we're using, or we're using. We, are gonna, we have made some progress. So I'm going to show a review app, which is a GitLab feature on the quality dashboard. And these are under GitLab org. 
there's a new page now called Developer Productivity Metrics. And this is the first iteration that's currently in progress for migrating all the Google Sheet uh, data into, into this dashboard. And we're going to add the rolling average trend line after this. And uh, this is still in progress. It's in a feature, uh, it's in a rewrap for the dashboard. And uh, Mark Fletcher is, is currently working on the, the rolling average line. Mm. It would be nice to add, uh, this is great, by the way, in addition to uh, team only, community only, it would be nice to have aggregate um, if we don't already, meaning the combined Got it. project. Um, great. Well, maybe we could, um, Adal, you mentioned maybe looking at another team besides configure. Uh, just to, I, I'm curious if we see a smoothing effect at a larger scale, maybe a team with six or eight people. Okay. Uh, Dal, you want me to throw back the screen share? Uh, sure. I, I was going to try to do it <laughs> before I share my screen, but I can share my screen and we can look at it together. Okay. Uh, let me do that. Um, so let's, my teams tend to be on the smaller side. So I'm like, if we look at verify, that's a team of four. Um, there is a little bit of smooth. This is this week. So we can't like <laughs> think of this as a full week yet. Um, so that's not concerning, but this is a team that very much have embraced smaller MRs and are, is seeing a lot of value in it. Um, no, but you can still see like we have a huge impact of that day. Um, you know, the date of the seventh does drive a lot of, you know, getting things to the finish line. Um, so, mm -hmm. We'll see. I, I am watching that, that trend and seeing how quickly we can move away from it. Um, but I would say let's, let's definitely team. do ourselves a favor and um, either uh, exclude that week in progress or, or I should say exclude the week in progress from the rolling trend line uh, and even maybe visually denote the, the week in progress here from the other weeks. Because one thing we noticed uh, in the uh, dashboard, and you saw it briefly when Max shared a screen of it, when you include the week in, week in progress or the milestone in progress in the rolling average, the rolling average always has this downward angle to the slope. And visually, people check it, and there's this sort of freak out moment they have of like, <laughs> oh my gosh, we're crashing. And it's like, no, no, that, that week is always in yeah. progress. So we should do something either, I don't know, uh, visually uh, promote it from the completed weeks or not included in the trend line or something just to prevent that initial like yeah shock factor um yeah no i can understand that because this is the third time i've had to remind the person i'm talking to that this is the current week and it's only wednesday yeah uh, it is wednesday right <laughs> so yeah no i get it i like it in the chart because as you're going day to day you can start to see like you can also optimize on is everyone waiting till friday or is there a pressure from you know we're not actually getting that daily delivery that we're hoping for um but maybe we can denote it in some way that um can you know highlight that it's the current week so i'm just looking at you know, across some of the different teams, this was planned that we were looking at. Um, create, like we're still seeing a focus on November 5th, which, which I think will continue to be the case till we get in the habit of just delivering without worrying so much that this is when everything needs to be done. Um, but for now, it's most of the team graphs that we're seeing. Oops, mm -hmm. we looked at. Verify. So this is, I mean, this is interesting. This trend does not have the peak that we saw, uh, but more of a peak, you know, this past week, um, ignoring the last week on the graph here. Um, so that is interesting. And, and the security one, I assume, was one that was done, like was uh, converted to a, bu a public issue and why it's showing up here. Mm. Okay. So I'm going to okay. get that quote from you. Well, there, are there any other um, either you know, having having used systems like this before? Are there any other edge cases or benefits you'd want to highlight that we'll potentially get, or any any things that are further out than the next few regressions that are kind of like you know your nirvana state or stuff you you really want us to get to? Uh, yeah, I mean, with throughput, this is this is pretty good. A big part of it is 
keeping it simple, making sure like there is this, this drive of, I want to track every label and you really want to, you know, get away from being so specific because that leads to inconsistencies and um, just, you won't get the benefit of having a chart like this. So I think we're in a pretty good state for throughput with the things that we discussed, uh, being able to have these debugging tools for managers is going to be helpful. And even for the team, so they, they themselves can have a view into what's going on week to week. Uh, along with that, I've used cycle time. So cycle time is a great way to pair up throughput and be able to, to understand what is that time to delivery. Um, so that helps when you're having conversations about bottlenecks is to you know, pair up cycle time with it. Uh, quality is really important. If your throughput is to the roof, but you know, your production is going down, um, we need to do something you know, like this. You're, you're, we're not focusing on the right thing and uh, focusing on quality in that case would be more important. So definitely, like I have, I have an epic defined with multiple um, additional graphs, if you will, and those all complement each other when you're having those conversation at a team level. Cool. Great. Well, any anything else or any closing thoughts from you, Dahlia or you, Mac? I just want to say that we ha we will have a follow up issue to address the, the the pending or current milestone and current week. Um, I know that this feedback has been given to us before, but I'll make sure there's an explicit issue to to tackle this. Cool. Great. And yeah, then, now that I'm uh, looking at this screen, sorry to interrupt, Dahlia. Um, we we talked about group versus team. Group is sort of our slice for any generic arrangement of people at the company or within the open source community. Uh, and team is a very specific thing, but I see when I below here associated project level views, I see GitLab dash CE team, yada, yada, yada. We should probably just rename these groups or make sure we're sure. consistent with our terminology. It's, these, are, it's a, these are projects too. So we, I don't know, Mac, how you feel about it, but maybe just drop team out of it because, because basically the info we need is this first part. I agree. This is confusing because these aren't teams, these are projects. So I'll, yeah, take, that, exactly. I'll take that action out as well. Cool. Uh, and we that's may want to just yeah. update it up here as well. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, thanks for uh, overall awesome work that the last Kona group versus team is just a little bit of cleanup, but, uh, cool. but um, yeah, really awesome progress. It's nice to see this, uh, see this come together. And how about uh, eventually getting this into the product uh, or project itself? Uh, if it's useful to us, is it useful to our users or our customers? And will we eventually see this in, uh, in GitLab itself? I am a huge fan of that idea. Like this is something that I'm planning to drive. I've had conversations with Victor. Uh, we've exchanged some notes on issues and the epics that I mentioned. And if you need links to him, let me know. Uh, but yeah, no, I, absolutely. This is something that I feel as an engineering leader, you, you will find to be like a great tool to have conversations with your team. That's not... I have a feeling that we're not as productive as we need to be. That's never like the greatest way to open a conversation with the team. And instead, if you, if you build out that habits that you have engineering metrics that you review weekly with the team, and it is a healthy way of saying, what is, what is going on here? Is there a bottleneck we should discuss? Are you frustrated with something? Um, so I've really seen a shift in conversations with metrics than when you're kind of flying blind without them. And, I, and I'm assuming since we're such a transparent company that these dashboards are open to the entire company, if not open to the public. Max, <laughs> I'm leaving that one to you. I, I, I just pulled up another uh, data point here. So the last updated on the groups of the function, the feature charts was in December 3rd. And I think the team, if you can allow me to share my screen one second, this is the, the latest and greatest uh, so far. So I think the team has decided on a, a sharding library that we're gonna use to implement this into gitlab.com as a feature. And this is the, uh, that, that's what it's gonna look like um, when we implement it as a feature in GitLab. Okay, but these, uh, with regard to transparency and openness, like these, these charts, regardless of how they're implemented, will be open to the world if, or, or to uh, everybody within the company? Yes, the, the dashboard is public and we, okay. And then the, the code is also open source and public as well. Great, because I, I was thinking as you were making your point, I, uh, I'm, my hope is, is that if these are useful enough, um, individual team members will be looking at them and they'll be raising potential problems or celebrations to their managers or their teammates, as opposed to just the manager, you know, kind of top down saying, hey, everybody, let's look at the dashboards. I hope this is useful enough where uh, everybody just kind of organically starts using it to learn about uh, the, what the, the company's doing and what their team is doing. 
yeah, absolutely. Yep. No, it's not a, uh, you know, secret manager tool or anything like that. <laughs> Big brother, right? Yeah, we want to avoid that for sure. For sure. Um, great. Okay. Well, if there isn't anything else, uh, thanks so much for the overview. I appreciate it. Are you both good with uh, hitting the upload to YouTube button? Yeah, I think so. Great. That's great. Thanks so much. Great progress. Talk cool. soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.